Sale GP Insights takes a data lab to every Sale Grand Prix. This lab conceals the best kept secrets of Sale GP's fleet. This room receives data from 1,300 sensors placed on board the F-50s. Teams can see each other's data, but only those who know what to look for will find the key to success. The best sailors in the world know this room as the Grand Prix Vault. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Sail GP Season 3 Grand Final Weekend in San Francisco. Teams Australia and New Zealand have already secured their spots in the Grand Final, but the third spot is still up for grabs. It's down to Emirates GBR and Team France. One of them will qualify. This is GBR versus France. Who will come out on top? Who will make it to the Grand Final? And who's going to compete for over a million dollars in prize money? We have five fleet races to decide. Three today and two tomorrow. The team that accumulates the most points will claim that precious third spot in the Grand Final. Racing's underway and it looks like Team Emirates GBR are really going for it. Flight controller Luke Parco Parkinson really showing the fleet how it's done. GBR is doing just an amazing job. They're foiling higher than everyone else, super stable. So GP, it's, it happens thick and fast. We get out there and there's a very limited amount of races that we really have to perform. My job is to fly the boat and to, to fly it well and to fly it high. The higher you fly, the faster you go, but it makes it a little bit on edge and a bit sketchy, but loose is, loose is fast, loose is fun. In, uh, in San Fran, Parco did the masterclass, flying the boat super high and really stable. On the first day of sailing here at the Mubudla Sail GP Season 3 Grand Final San Francisco, race number two goes the way of the Brits. All the other teams are capable of uh, sailing high, but they're not able to keep it on as long as uh, GBR. And look at this, France flying the hole, and I don't know if that's intentional. Look at that, turns the boat away from the wind, they fall off the foils. That's so unfortunate for the French. The French are struggling, let's be honest. The questions are raised on why, why can't I do it if they are able to do it. The French run to the data container, like the vault of information, and they say, what's going on here? You know, how are they doing that? I think a lot of um, teams come up to us, all the data analysts, and with these questions, like, how are they able to do it? There's so much going on on the boat, and those are things that are sometimes a little invisible from the outside. There's so many different variables here, like they're sailing higher, but they're also sailing uh, with the wing in a different position, with the boat heeled in a different position, the rudders with a different brake. The data scientists at the vault are used to getting asked lots of questions, but sometimes the questions that they ask, even they don't know the answer to, and this was one of those questions. It's hard to see which one is the one that is creating this stable flight mode. So that's why we need the AI model here to tell us the most important factor to concentrate on. There's no one thing that's really obvious. So as you do, they write an algorithm, which is mad, to be able to figure it out. They're using AI programming to basically get the computer to figure out how to sail an F-50 the best and then compare it to how the sailors are using the F-50. Do you think at the end of this, the AI will be able to fly the boat instead of Parco? Control AI that fly the boat? Park AI. <laughs> I wasn't aware that the, the other teams were studying to such an extent with the Oracle system. I knew a lot of teams were sort of looking at, at it. You know, over the few seasons of Sail GP, I've sort of been aware that the other teams, are, you know, they're raising their bar and they're trying to close the gap. So to the frustration of the French team, the AI algorithm couldn't produce the answers in time for day two. But this didn't stop Hugo diving into the data and trying to find out how Paco could fly that boat so high. 
and the answer is, is really fascinating. This AI machine spits out that the ability of their flight controller was just modulating the perfect amount over those huge San Francisco waves. On the flight controller, you're having to preempt what is coming at you and how the boat is going to respond. They have to predict the future. They have to feel the turbulence on the foil before it catches. They've got to understand how the forces are changing and really act on intuition. To be flying that high, it just means you have more skill and you're more consistent. Paco's hands are moving so fast, they're, they're probably moving before he even knows what's coming at him. That's what makes him one of the best flight controllers here at SailGP. And it's Emirates GBR that bagged the points ahead of France, which sees them reach the grand final, a masterclass from Ben Ainsley and his crew. Luke Parkinson's performance was so good that the vault needed AI to decode his magic. The breakthrough now is the fact that we're using more and more AI. I think it's really, really cool. Uh, it helps us to understanding how the boats behave. Who knows what the future holds? AI is evolving. I think the vault is just going to get better and better. And the things that they're going to discover, the things they're going to find, the lessons that, that they can teach, I think it's going to transform sailing and the way that we learn. And it's going to be incredible to watch. I guess with the F-50, there's, there is some tricks and some little secrets that I'm definitely not going to you know, give away. And um, I hold them pretty close because it's, it's a large part of why I you know, pride myself on what I do. And I look forward to other teams you know, trying to challenge me to push me further because I think I can still go further. <laughs>